Welcome to Town Board Workshop, Thursday, February 7th. Please rise and salute the flag. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Emergency exits are to my right behind the town attorney and also the door you came in. Roll, please. Councilman Gutierrez? Here. Councilwoman Samoji? Here. Councilwoman Doyle? Here. And Supervisor Purdy? Here. And the record will reflect that Councilman Morris is absent. Public comment? I guess not. Uh, supervisor's report. <clears throat> Wasaic Trail of the Train update. We're Completing DOT and Dutchess County requirements before construction can begin. Received notification from DOT that $44,404 reimbursement for right-of-way expenses will be sent to the Town of Amenia by EFT in the near future. Town of Amenia Highway Garage Land Update. Deed was recorded on February 6, 2019 by the Dutchess County Clerk's Office, so the town of Amenia now owns five <coughs> acres of land for a new highway garage. Yay. <laughs> Amenia Town Hall upgrades, window replacement project proceeding in addition to bathrooms, front door and ramp ADA upgrades. CDBG grant reimbursement received for $12,630 from Dutchess County for allowed ADA project engineering costs. Noise law update under review by the town board. Dutchess County shared services with town of Abenia. Evaluations completed by planning board attorney Dave Everett in addition to town board members Jim Mor James Morris and Vicki Doyle. Dutchess County procurement specialists applied formula used to designate two top candidates to be interviewed. Interviews will be in March 2019. Regional ambulance grant. After the towns of Northeast, Samenia and Dover met in with the village of Millerton meeting with Dutchess County Emergency Response Commissioner, it was decided to send the consultant's report to the agencies that provide ambulance services to find out what options are available in an ROI or a request for information. Town Clerk report. Good evening. I report this evening that the monthly share um, has been remitted to the town supervisor's office in the amount of $709.50. Total collected this month was $769.50. To date collected for town taxes is $1,645,511.44. Uh, I've satisfied our special districts, Nina Fire, Wasik Fire, Water District, Nina Lighting, Wasik Lighting, the library, the two re-levies for the miscellaneous and the water. Partial payments have already been submitted to uh, the town for general and highway funds. So I have a remaining to collect three million six hundred sixty-four dollars one hundred fifteen nah, six million six hundred sixty-four thousand one hundred fifty-nine dollars and nineteen cents. So thank you everyone who's submitting those payments. Um, I'm also presenting this evening um, minutes from December of 2018 and January of 2019. Has the board had the opportunity to review those minutes? Mm -hmm. The minutes of December 6th, December 13th, January 3rd, and January 17th. Is there a hard copy? Just In your me. packet underneath, right where you just had your hand on it. Underneath, underneath the Walter Brett. Uh, the first three were circulated at the last meeting. The change was um, a D to an uh, F and eight hours. I had the, the <laughs> eight hours. So thank you, Mr. Morris, who caught on to that. Do you want to come back to them at the end of the meeting or you good? Or? No, I'm good. I mean, oh, okay. The, the one I was absent for clearly. You were absent on the 17th. Mm -hmm. So do you want to do them individually or? Yes. Yes. Okay. So December 6th. I make a motion Michelle. to accept the main minutes. Second. Damien. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? December 13th. Make a motion that we 
accept the December 13th, 2018 minutes. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? January 3rd reorganizational meeting. Move the acceptance of the January 3rd, 2019 okay. minutes as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And finally, January 17th. I make a motion that we accept the minutes for January 17th. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Any abstain? I'm just going to just do it for you. <laughs> and one abstention. <laughs> Sorry, Damien. <laughs> Thank you. Publisher Minutes, Texas. Um, I also present this evening, um, of course, with regret. Um, I received uh, Chris Kligner's resignation from the Recreation Commission to be effective immediately due to the change in the meeting schedule he's unable to attend. Uh, so, present that. I move that we accept with, um, with regret Chris's um, resignation from the Recreation Commission. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And I'm also seeking um, authorization to go ahead and advertise that position. The term will expire on December 31st of 2020. Make a motion to authorize the town clerk to advertise for uh, Recreation Commission and any other um, committees where there are vacancies. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, any opposed? And uh, I'd just like to give a special shout out to my husband who has served on the Recreation Commission since March of 2018. Not only serving on the commission, um, he spent um, many years over on the baseball field uh, as a baseball coach watching our children grow from Tiny Tots to Little League. Uh, he worked dil diligently um, trying to make improvements to the park, which also included um, some of our playground equipment. Uh, prior to us even securing the documents for this town hall, Chris had the design to the playground that stands behind this town hall. So, um, you know, him and the kids dug the dirt to put in the rules <laughs> at our Wasake and our Beacon Park. So, um, thank you, Chris, for working with for our children on that committee. And I'd second that. He's done a great job on the commission and. Um, in recreation in general. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, I also present to the board this evening, um, for the past several years, the National Alliance on Mental Illness has um, sought support from the town for declaring the month of May as Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, so they are uh, seeking support for the proclamation declaring May 2019 as Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, it's the exact same proclamation that we've been um, accepting for the last handful of years. So I present that this evening. Make a motion that um, we declare May 2019 as Mental Health Awareness Month. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So I'll do up the new the proclamation and we mm. display it in the town clerk's office during the month of. I wanted to read the proclamation. Oh, yeah. Whereas mental health is essential to the well being and the vitality of families, businesses, and communities. Whereas mental health conditions are real and prevalent in our nation with one out of four Americans and one out of five children affected by mental illness. Whereas more people die from suicide in the United States than from traffic accidents, and an estimated 22 veterans die from suicide each day. Whereas stigma and fear of discrimination keep many who would benefit from mental health services from seeking help. Whereas with effective treatment, those individuals with mental health conditions can recover and lead full productive lives. 
whereas education, compassion, and awareness about mental illness can change negative attitudes and behaviors toward people with mental illness. Whereas each business, school, government agency, law enforcement agency, healthcare provider, organization, and citizen shares the responsibility to promote mental wellness and support prevention efforts. Now, efforts. Now, therefore, the town of Amenia, uh, uh, I, Victoria Perotti, on behalf of the town of Amenia, do hereby procl proclaim the month of May 2019 as Mental Health Awareness Month. As the supervisor, I also call upon all the town of Amenia citizens, government agencies, public and private institutions, businesses, and schools to recommit our community to increasing awareness and understanding of mental illnesses, reducing stigma and discrimination, and promoting appropriate and accessible services for all individuals. Thank you for doing that, and I'm sure the association thinks so. Um, <clears throat> moving right along, some activities for the month of February. Starting off in two weeks, Thursday, February 21st, uh, the town clerk's office in correlation with the Amenia Fire Company is hosting our sixth annual blood drive here at the Amenia Town Hall from 3 p.m. to 7.30. Um, as we announced last month, February is Heart Month. So come on down and we'll be glad to take a pint of your blood. <laughs> and after you're all done with that fun activity, on Friday evening you can go to the Wasake Fire Company. They're going to be hosting bingo. Uh, it's Friday, February 22nd. Doors open at 5.30 and bingo will begin promptly at 6.30. Come support your local fire departments. And that will conclude the town clerk's report for this meeting. Um, did you we want, want to? Do the, you want me to? Yes. So um, earlier this evening, prior to the start of the meeting, the town board had the opportunity to interview two candidates for uh, two open positions. The first position is our water clerk position. The town board had the opportunity to interview Nancy Nowak. Is there a motion to? Yeah, make a motion um, to hire Nancy Nowak as water clerk for the town of Amina Water District. Effective immediately. I'll second. <coughs> Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Samoji? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Also this evening, the town board had the opportunity to interview Walter Brett for the open planning board position. This is a planning board position. It's a seven year full term, term to expire on December 31st, 2025. Read the notes. I'll make a motion that we accept his application for the planning board position. Second. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Samoji? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Perotti? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, great. Um, I received an email um, regarding extending the um, tax collection mm -hmm. date from the Association of Towns. Apparently the governor um, has, um, for anyone, for any town who wants to do so, to extend the tax collection period without penalty for 21 days. And is that something that we want to do? 90 days. It was 90 days. 90 days? It was a 90-day extension for any Employees. employees. So I um, received that same notice. We've been discussing it as um, tax collectors, um, and it, it, it does entirely depend up to the um, governing board, which would be the, the town board, as uh, if you want to go ahead and, and pass that local law to go ahead and, and authorize that. I personally have not received any calls from any of our residents requesting said extension. Okay. It, was, uh, it, it is optional. Mm -hmm. and it, it, Oh, sorry. It was optional, but it did appear that um, 
it was anticipated that the shutdown was going to continue longer, so the, it, it, the shutdown ended almost as soon as they passed it. So, um, but it is still available. Okay. And it's up to the board. It doesn't sound like there's a need for it. Okay. Just thought I'd bring it up. Do we have time to pass that later if there is another shutdown? If there's a impending one soon to Correct. come. Um, no, you have to let them know by tomorrow. I, yeah, the way I read the law, it's only for the, it was for this current, so. They February 28th. Would, yep. So the 90 days would have gone past that point. Uh, well, I don't think it could hurt in the event that uh, someone was affected, but they have not yet reached out. I think it's a fair thing to do. You'd have to prepare it. <laughs> yeah, I would. I can. I can prepare it for next meeting. Is this a one-time extension? Or? Yes. Yeah, and it is just an extension. It's not. Yeah. There's, it's not any relief. It's just an extension for them to pay. And it was 90 days from the date that it that the, the shutdown That's ended. Right. So. Okay, so it wouldn't actually. If there is another shutdown, it wouldn't actually bring any benefit to those people. No. So uh, basically, the, the clock is ticking on that 90 days already. Has the supervisor and mayors um, in our county discussed this if other towns are, are going into it? No, I just got the email today. Yeah. So it's just like kind of a last minute thing that got sent to us. All right, so if someone reaches out to you, Dawn, uh, by tomorrow, um, we would still have time to prepare something for our next meeting. All right, so I would encourage anyone who was affected by the federal uh, shutdown who would like an extension on town taxes to reach out to the tax collector, uh, ideally by tomorrow, and the board will prepare. Uh, we'll ask you to prepare it. I also extension. have language because there, there is proof. You have to show proof that you're. There's that items that they have to be able to provide. So we can. Like, an ID and, and all that. And, I, and I can, I can, I can, we can I give it to Dawn and get that posted so people okay. know what they have to do um, in this way. Based off of the conversations that we had in our group chat, we, we none of us found it to be. Um, a movement that we were going to. I mean, several of them approached the, their supervisors out in the Wappinger area and Fishkill and East Fishkill, Poughkeepsie, Hyde Park. They were all going to their supervisors because they were they're seeing it, what their their group had decided, and none of their groups had even been aware of it. Um, none of us on this side of the county have been approached or asked or anybody's inquired. Um, with the tax amounts that I've read aloud, we're we're um, much farther along than we have in years prior, mm -hmm. so I didn't. It didn't look like it didn't was look a problem. Like it was something here. for okay. us. But if I mean, most certainly, if somebody is being affected, I would encourage them to go ahead, send us the email, and if it's something that we're going to go ahead and present for the next meeting, it's going to be the next meeting mm -hmm. on the 21st. Then we can certainly coordinate that. Perfect. To happen because it, it does go the 90 days from that window, and it's already ticking. So. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. But thank you for opening to that. Okay, building report. The January monthly report um, issued they issued ten new building permits totaling three thousand nine hundred nineteen dollars and seventy five cents. We are continuing with certificate of occupancy searches. For this month, we did 13 searches, which totaled $2,100, with 11 fire inspections of $550, and three renewals of $550. Be it further advised, there was an application and zoning fees of $130, bringing the total for the month to $7,249.75. Are there any other committee reports? CAC is compiling elements of the natural Amenia's natural resource inventory. It's a draft at this moment, but it's in really great shape. And so we're uh, pulling together uh, the different chapters. And uh, 
myself and uh, Michael Peak and uh, and Victoria attended a the last 10 mile river watershed collaboration, and we um, basically agreed that the um, Dover and um, Millerton CACs working on their climate smart communities um, goals would be all three of these towns would be interested in working together to um, do some educational projects that would gain points for um, grant uh, grant funded um, applications in the future so we were um, some ideas that have come up already is um, a wildlife photo exhibit um, and then another town was interested in doing um, like a recycling education program that would kind of cover the do's and the don'ts and some of the current issues such as plastics there's a big change and um, changes going on right now as we speak so I think um, I would really support both of those projects the um, exhibit photographic exhibit of our natural resources. The natural resource inventory is phenomenal with photographs and um, very interesting maps and such. But I think also recycling is just something that all of us um, would benefit from learning what's going on. Um, and there's a lot of educational materials out there, but it's not that easy to understand the changes and they're changing as we speak. So both of those projects would be good, in my opinion. That's all I have for CAC. Do you have any other committee reports? Um, I have, uh, I guess it's under recreation. Um, the bus trip is scheduled to go to Hunter Down Hills Playhouse. And in April, that's our first trip out. Miss my flyer, there it is. And uh, please uh, sign up as soon as you can. Uh, flyers went out to everybody that was on my list from last year. Uh, so you should have gotten your flyers in the mail. Let me know if you're coming or not. We have 35 seats, and I already have 10 seats signed up for. So it's going to go quickly. Um, the, the other trips and stuff, I should have them done uh, by March, we should know what's uh, what's available to us and what's, what's going to work for us. Um, the Easter egg hunt is going to be on Saturday, April 6th, and I spoke with Erica at the library f to help uh, set up things, and she said she was very interested in it and would like to uh, uh, support the community in that way. So she's going to bring it to the, her, bo her board meeting at the library on Monday night to see how they can fit into our schedule. Um, we're going to be filling 2,000 eggs this year because, which is double from last year because we had such a large turnout. It was an incredible turnout. Um, also on Thursday, May 9th, the Golden Age Singers will be coming here to the town hall at uh, 2 p.m., a free concert. Everyone is welcome regard of your age. It's, it's for the town of Amini. It's not just uh, you know for seniors or young people or, or anything like that. Uh, so those are the main things for the recreation that I know about. Okay, you set in. Okay, resolution for First Amendment to escrow agreement. Second Amendment. <coughs> It's, the resolution is correct, the agenda is not. Oh, it's second? It's true, okay. second. Okay. <clears throat> resolution number? 13. I'll keep 13. <laughs> Proving the form of the second amendment to the stock escrow agreement for the Silo Ridge Sewage Works <coughs> Corporation. <clears throat> Whereas on December 17, 2015, the town board approved the establishment of the Silo Ridge Sewage Works Corporation for the purpose of owning and operating a private sewage works system to serve the mixed use resort community, community known as the Silo Ridge Field Club, located in the town of Amenia. Whereas in accordance with section 1193A of New York State Transportation Corporation law, the stock of S. RSWC is required to be held by the town in escrow as security in the event of S 
RSWC's failure to complete the construction of the system or in the event of abandonment or discontinuance of the maintenance and operation of the system by SRSWC. And whereas on May 5, 2016, SRSWC, the town and the attorney to the town, Denise Fitzpatrick, entered into an escrow agreement as escrow agent on behalf of the town. Whereas Fitzpatrick is no longer the attorney to the town and now resides outside of New York State and no longer desires to act as the escrow agent. Whereas pursuant to a resolution number 48 for 2018 of the town board adopted August 2nd, 2018, the town approved a first amendment to escrow agreement authorizing Scott L. Volkman, Esquire, Stanger, Roberts, Davis, and Diamond LLP as escrow agent, which First Amendment to escrow agreement was never executed by the parties. Whereas the parties now desire to further amend the escrow agreement to substitute Don Marie Klinger, the town clerk for the town of Amenia, as escrow agent in place of Fitzpatrick. Whereas the parties desire to enter into the Second Amendment to escrow agreement in form annexed here too, which replaces Fitzpatrick with the town clerk as the escrow agent, subject to the same terms and conditions of the escrow agreement. Now therefore be it resolved that after review and due consideration of all the foregoing, the town board hereby approves the form of second amendment to escrow agreement in the form annexed here too. And hereby authorizes the town clerk to act as escrow agent in accordance with the terms of the escrow agreement and to accept and acknowledge receipt of the original stock certificate. And be it further resolved that the town board hereby authorizes the town supervisor to execute the second amendment to escrow agreement on behalf of the town of Amenia <coughs> in the form of next tier two. Is there a motion? Make that motion. Second. I'd like to uh, just suggest that we don't put a name in there. We just say the town clerk in case for some reason Don Marie decides not to be the town clerk. So you just to substitute the town clerk for the town. I mean, it only clerk? once mentions her by name. Uh, I think it's position. position. Yeah. Essentially, that's why we're doing it anyways. That's why we're doing it. To put a name, it has to have a name in there. No, 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 oh, no. 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 We put it to we're the moving position. it from we're moving it from the attorneys to right. the town clerk. Right. So you don't have to, if there's any Absolutely. So that there's yes. no change right. every you time. Keep doing it but if you time. mention Don Marie in here, then we'll have okay. to change it. So it'll be to substitute yeah. the town clerk but, for the town of Amelia. Right. You good with that? Yeah. Okay. Then it's generic going forward. Okay. Supervisor Prody? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Samoji? Yes. And you have it with you? Yeah. I do. Okay. <laughs> Okay, resolution 14. Yeah. Okay, so this one we take Don Marie's name and lock it up in the vault right now. Transfer of funds for December number 3, 2018. Whereas the town board has the authority to transfer funds when necessary or unanticipated to amend the budget. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense line 19904.01.060 special item CE landfill planning by $2,036.19 and decreasing expense line 16204.01.004 building CE by $2,036.19 for the cost of decommissioning damage monitoring well in the old Amenia landfill. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense line 90108.01 state retirement by $3,259.70 and decreasing Expense line 90608.01037 medical insurance deductibles for unanticipated costs. Now, therefore, be it resolved the town board authorizes a transfer of necessary budget lines to process the transactions. I make that motion. Second. Supervisor Prody? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Smudgy? Yes. And resolution for a standard work day and reporting for New York State and local employees retirement system. Resolution number 15. Yes. 
Resolution for standard work day and reporting for New York State and local employees retirement system. Meeting of the town board of the town of Amenia held at the Amenia Town Hall on the seventh day of February 2019, 7 p.m. Town Supervisor Victoria Perotti called the meeting to order. And I need a mo um, someone to make a motion and second. I'll make that motion. Second. Introduce the following resolution to it, whereas it is required by the New York State Employees Retirement System that all active employees, elected and appointed officials, participating in the retirement system have a locally established standard work day for the purposes of reporting retirement credit. Whereas the town of Amenia has active full-time and part-time employees and elected and appointed officials who participate in the New York State Employees Retirement System. Now therefore, be it resolved that the town board hereby adopts the following as standard work days for active full-time and part-time employees and elected and appointed officials and will report the following days worked to the New York State and local employees retirement system. Title, highway, laborers, machine, <coughs> equipment operator, eight hours, working foreman, eight hours, deputy town clerk, six hours. Custodian, six hours. Clerk, court clerk, six hours. Secretary, supervisor, planning board, six hours. Typist, senior typist, six hours. Bookkeeper, six hours. Building inspector, six hours. Constable, six hours. Summer camp director, six hours. All other elected or appointed officials, six hours. Foregoing resolution was voted upon with all council persons voting as follows. Supervisor Prody? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Smoji? Yes. And Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Okay, other matters? I don't think we have any other matters. Public comment? Yes, no one here for public comment. <laughs> Town board comments? I do have something uh, to comment on. It's the last, last meeting we did the noise ordinance, chapter. 80 noise warnings and um, there was a lot of discussion about and I invo involved myself in that discussion and so I have listened to everything and reviewed everything and these are my suggestions or recommendations for these ordinances the uh, noisy vehicles uh, It's to operate any vehicle by a point, uh, applying compression, release, engine brakes, called Jake brakes, in such a manner to cause unreasonable noise. I found that this is going to be a difficult thing to monitor or gauge, but I think that the town board should request that the supervisor write a letter to the DOT to have uh, a speed limit from south on Route 22 by Immaculate Conception Cemetery to north on Route 22 to the Maple Brook School. And, and that sign should be a post of 35 miles an hour and also signs that say no Jake brakes uh, to be used. I think that's the main drag and 22 is a state road and I think that will help alleviate what some of the people along that strip find it uh, annoying. Uh, for noise from processing of wood or trees. Um, I used to make, okay. Impulsive or explosive, oh that's guns. What I've come to conclude with that is that uh, People here use wood for heating of their homes and property, and they, they do it on their property and stuff. And I think that if they did it for uh, two hours at a time with a 30 minute break for their neighbors and such, for such that they can continue doing it uh, seven days a week, weekends and holidays, uh, eight o'clock in the morning or to, to dusk or whatever it might be. Of course, always considering your neighbors when you're doing something like that. Uh, and I, I don't think that, there's no way to gauge any time restraint or what day would be best for some people because they work and, and they do things like that. So I think that's the best system uh, to do that. 
Then we did the gun thing, impulsive and explosive sound levels, unreasonable noise, shooting, should be permitted seven days a week, including weekends and holidays, and the shooting should uh, take place for no more, again, for two hours with a 30-minute break from uh, dawn to dusk. Uh, review of the, the noise ordinance was really requested by the code enforcement officer in some extent, so he would be able to evaluate these no the noise ordinances and stuff, the noises that are going on the property. If he has guidelines, and the people who have the property have the guidelines, it will be easier for the code enforcement officer to go and say, you've done it for six hours, you really shouldn't have done it that long, or what have you. And then people who have um, concerns about the noise, uh, that they should be able to come down, well they can still, come down here to the town board, and uh, not to the town board, I'm sorry, the town hall, and go and see the code enforcement officer and fill out the complaint form stating what it's about and everything. That way the officer can look at it, can review it, and can be able to maybe explain to the person uh, why that person can do that, or if there's a really a, a nuisance, be able to go to the person who's creating the noise uh, to be able to help uh, explain to them that they should, you know, be, uh, cut it back to the proper time. Because everyone in the town of Armenia, whether, uh, whether you own your own home or you rent or you have recreational property that you use just during certain seasons and stuff, has the right to enjoy their property fully. And I really think that this is very simple and uh, easy to understand. Uh, I understand it, and I just uh, wanted to let people know that when we discussed it last time, that I was really trying to understand the best way to address these noise ordinance, these noises, so that everyone could um, understand it in the town of Amenia. Whoever you are, you would be able to understand it, and then the code enforcement officer would be able to understand it and be able to act on it, and then hopefully, this would be one thing we can resolve in the noise ordinance. And I thank you all for your uh, kind <coughs> input from people. I spoke with, I'll tell you, I spoke with people who I don't know, they didn't know me on some of these topics, and they are not even probably around this area and stuff, explaining one gentleman, I had him explain Jake breaks to me, so I would understand what that was. And he doesn't live here, but he drives one of those great big trucks. But uh, uh, I did look into it, and I just think this might be the best way to address things, very simple, very direct, with times and places, and things that we can handle, we should be able to handle. And I thank you all for your kind attention. Okay, can you make a copy of that and give it to all of us? Sure. So we all have it. I'll, I'll make it neater. <laughs> no. Did you suggest Jake Brakes being outlawed just within the Immaculate Conception, the Maplebrook School area? Is that the only area that you would suggest? Well, I don't know where else they would use it. They, they, the big trucks run on uh, the main road, 22. Yeah. So uh, we've had complaints historically on South Amenia Road because we have gravel trucks, oh. which use the Jake brake even though it's a very, you know, you shouldn't be traveling more than 30 miles an hour. So the use of a Jake brake, it's relatively flat, um, seems a little overkill for um, the reality, but it doesn't stop them from well, using the Jake brake. Well, what the gentleman that I spoke with who drove, the, who dro drives this big uh, truck, mm -hmm. uh, he explained to me that the Jake brakes on some vehicles, they're automatic. The driver has no control over it. It's, it's a safety feature that's put into the truck, so when it starts to de uh, decrease its speed, the Jake brake will automatically put, move in and, and take, care, take it over if they have no control. Some trucks, and he explained his particular truck, uh, he has control over the Jake brakes and he can implement them and, and make them work. So the thing is that um, it won't be perfect. So if somebody stuck. has one that just automatically comes on and you outlaw it, how does that work? Keep in mind, what we're trying to do here is to 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 address the noise from from that system. So some modern systems, which are automatic, may not make 
that same level of noise as some of the I don't older. think you're not you're not going to be able to outlaw them anyway. You, you, but we're not, and, and well, that's that was the says point. Says no Jake breaks is what she suggested. But with, along with the when we discussed this last, we you know we, we're not asking anybody to uninstall equipment from their truck. They or, can't. But that's not what we're right. all we're saying is what we're trying to say is that if you have a very noisy vehicle. It could be for a number of different reasons. It right. could be your exhaust, it could be your brakes, it could right. be your Jake brake, it could be... The, we're trying to address the noise level, the un unreasonable noise from any vehicle. Right. Um, and so I think it's it's appropriate it? to say that we will not permit unreasonable noise from any Jake brake system anywhere in the town. Oh, I see. So, so that's, and that was, and the reason I put in 22, course, that's where the, uh, the county, I guess, can put in the signs. The state. The state. states. I'm sorry. The state can put in the signs for the speed limit so that it stays at a. Because the gentleman, the gentleman well, you have to request it. Yes. They're yeah. not necessarily going to do it. Of course, we well, we know that. Right? I mean, we'll go ahead and make the. We can make the request. We've been to that dance before. <laughs> But um, we can make the request and see if they will if they will do it for us. Because the gentleman who I spoke with, uh, he drives a big Dunkin' Donuts truck, and I met him in another area. And he he explained that a lot of towns will put up signs, please don't use your Jake brakes or, or something of that nature. The towns can do that. Um, but. Uh, it's a safety device. It is installed on these vehicles. They cannot be removed from these vehicles because it's a safety device for the, the driver of that vehicle if he gets into a situation where he's going to need that extra uh, power to stop the vehicle. So um, it's the, it, I, I think this is the best that we can offer, especially along the state road here, which is very busy. Um, the gravel pits and stuff like that. Maybe we can just put signs up down there. I don't know how that would work. But there isn't going to be any way to, to go out and police or monitor these Jake brakes uh, otherwise. Just by requesting that they don't use it in those other areas, it's fine. But. I would suggest that we do an outright ban of exploding targets because I think that is what has been the biggest issue for uh, the shooting that was occurring down in Wasaic. So uh, an out, a specific ban on Tannerite, I guess it's called, that would be, would improve <coughs> things dramatically. So I would not uh, be in favor of anything that did not include well, uh, that, that outright well, ban. Well, that, I, I didn't address that because it's already in the, the noise uh, shooting. An outright ban of yeah, yes, it says, yes, it does. It's, it, I don't know if it says. No, yes, in think, the draft. In the, the draft, draft update no, is what we're the, talking about. Not the, but, the so existing. There's, there's, there's two parts. There's the, the noise from gun, uh, gun use and, and, and exploding targets, which is addressed in the noise law. Mm -hmm. But what you're discussing is what some other municipalities have done, which is not part of a noise regulation, but it's just a straight out ban on that right. material for that right. use. So it's and very, so, very clear. Yeah, I think that that's it's not unreason it's not reasonable in any situation. Right. And so I think that would be appropriate. I would support that. I think that would be outside of the noise law. That yes. would just be a a new regulation. Uh, uh, would that yeah. be correct? Yeah. That would be part of the zoning, right? Yeah, it would be the Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, so we need to, I know we've had complaints about um, speed issues, especially down by the Immaculate Conception Church, and uh, yeah. also, so I think, um, you know, there's no reason we can't send a letter to see if we can um, have people traveling at a safer speed through theirs. Isn't yeah. it 35 miles an hour? I can't remember, but it seems to me it's already posted at 35. Well, as you said, the cemetery. She's starting from the cemetery oh, going down. The speed further. switches over just before um, the just chateau, the garage. Just, just where the old flower shop was is where the sign switches to 35 coming in. So she's talking about from the cemetery, so from Lake Amina Road. A little Road. bit further back, yeah. And in that way, when you turn that corner as you're approaching Fudgies, if I may, mm -hmm. when you're coming right. to the center of town, and then from there, keep it straight and keep it all the way down to Maple Rock. All right. Because you're coming into the center of <laughs> so town. Like whole, yeah. You know? Section, yep. Right. Because that happens. I think it does go up, and then it goes back down it again. It goes up and down. Yeah. 
because yep. it's here through 35 and then it switches yep. to 45 and then it goes back to 35 for the school zone between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. and then it goes back to 45, 55. Yeah. So that way, if it if it was just one just one simple straight uh, 35 miles an hour, which I know that they have in, in many towns, you know, where main Villages. roads go right through, um, and and that's our most congested area because that's where the stoplight is, that's where the roads cross over, that's where there's a lot of foot traffic, <coughs> and uh, I think a simple. Simple. Keep it simple, please. <laughs> okay. to get it out. <laughs> well, any um, any other input you have on the noise law draft? Just send to me so we can. Okay. Because I sat down and I wrote this all up in pencil. Because we're not, um, you know, we're not at the point where we're ready to make it into a local exactly. law yet. Exactly. <clears throat> but I just wanted to. Let you know that I have thought about it. This is what I. Well, that was good. I'm glad you did that. Thank you. Uh, uh, go ahead. Sorry, just I I owe you a response on the BAS uh, proposal. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're around tomorrow. If you want to meet or. Yeah, I'll uh, be here. Okay, so we can catch up. And I apologize for my excessive travel. I've been deficient. Well, that's and, okay. I know you've been here. There uh, and all not over. been uh, staying. So up to date on my email, apologies. But uh, the short of that is that uh, BAS, uh, late last year when we were putting the budget together for the uh, uh, for IT for the town, uh, I had asked BAS to just explore what it would take to migrate from uh, an, an on-premise, so hosting our own email server here in the town hall, to moving to Office 360, by the uh, the cloud hosted version, um, it's more reliable. It's safer. We won't have the password issues that we have. We'll have a more modern interface. It'll just automatically be up to date. the The biggest challenge when they came back with some estimates was uh, the migration fee. So there's this one time migration fee, as there typically is, to move us off the old system. Um, and we may need to just see if, if that would be covered by the, what we budgeted for this year. So that's what we can we can talk about. Um, and I did actually I did also request uh, bids or quotes for that same service from some other uh, Microsoft vendors that work with the town. So we can review those um, uh, together and then make a decision. Okay. Yeah, I did put extra money in the um, budget for IT because one of the other things we were looking at is the website mm -hmm. and that's uh, we uh, have an update for you on that as well okay good okay um, I just had one one other thing I'm, I'm sorry but I should mention um, JTR sent me this charter bus for all occasions thing they put a coupon in it it's not very much but it's thirty dollars <laughs> off of uh, a trip of nine hundred dollars or more so I'm going to check with them to see if that applies to us yes Please do. Because we, we need that $30. <laughs> we sure do. <laughs> Is there any other town board comment? I would suggest that we uh, keep an eye on the governor's budget because apparently they are um, proposing, he's proposing that they reconfigure the sales apportionment mm -hmm. of our share Damn. of the sales tax, which would be, uh, I think, have a huge impact. Interestingly, um, it wouldn't affect the big cities because they have a lot of full-time lobbyists. They're going to focus on the small towns, as I read from, I guess, a Poughkeepsie Journal article or something like that. So yeah, they want to take away would, our aim, aim. Would our like state to funding. Be, um, like someone to keep an eye on that issue and how that would impact our budget because uh, it should be out by April 1st and we should know before then, and we should also put whatever pressure we need to to make sure that they understand how that will adversely affect us. I assume it's going to be have a significant impact on us on a budget like ours. Well, I've already um, I sent you a copy of the letter that I sent to um, D.D. Bear and Senator Serino, um, asking them to assist us in the proposed budget um, according to the formula in there. We would be losing our state funding. 
which is $37,309, which was already counted as part of our revenue for the 2009 budget. So, um, so it would be an outright loss yes. of every right, and they would only not, focus e not their everybody. Money on, right, it's a no. The cities keep it. Right, the cities would have it. They came up with this formula somehow. <laughs> if you're, um, if the amount you get from the state is less than two percent of your total expenses, they are not going to give it to you. And our percentage is 1.45, so we would lose it. It's insanity. Which is why, um, why I sent the letter. I mean, it's it's just, you know, we that I mean, we already have that amount as projected revenue in our budget, and to just not get it um, is a is a blow. My guess is this formula has a lot more to do with but the cities towns are and municipalities that mm -hmm. don't have any lobbying um, mm -hmm. mechanism. Mm -hmm. So I would I appreciate that you're staying on top of it, and I would urge everybody to reach out further to Dee Dee and Sue and the governor's office and make sure they understand this is not going to be. Um, this would this would propose a huge would be a hardship especially for a small town like us. Yeah. Okay, is there any other town board comment? Who's gonna take Jim's place tonight? <laughs> oh, I'll make a motion to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, let me see, the, jo the James Morris adjourn. motion to, to adjourn the meeting <laughs> and, uh, this evening. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. Damien.